Create groups and organize a timeline. In this video, we'll create a timeline group, rename a timeline group, and expand a timeline group. In Fusion 360, we want to carry on with our gear reduction housing assembly. At this point in time, our browser is starting to fill up with components. We have a lot of different components in the browser, a lot of hardware, and if we look at the bottom in the timeline, we actually have enough here that we can scroll back and forth. This becomes problematic when we need to identify different elements in the timeline or in the browser. Of course, if we activate a component, it will isolate those specific features inside of the timeline. However, that only works if you were creating them while you're using an active component. Let's take a look at different ways that we can organize the browser and the timeline to help us simplify our workflow. First, let's take a look at the timeline. You can see here that we have a lot of different joints and capture positions that were used. We have some patterns for things like the hardware and the creation of components by using copy paste. Some of these elements can be combined into what's called a timeline group. And when we create timeline groups, you'll notice there are small plus icons underneath specific elements. Some of them get created automatically depending on what we're doing. For example, if we insert a component from McMaster Car, a base feature and a component are created as its own group. When we do things like have a sheet metal component, notice that elements are already created in a group. And this is because we brought this in from an external file. So when we created that distributed design and we broke the link, it automatically put that in a group. Let's start at the very end from the creation of our joints, capture positions, and motion links. I'm gonna select the last motion link, shift select the first rigid group, then we're gonna right click and use the option to create group. When we create a group, we now have those items nested inside of a group in the timeline. This makes it a bit easier for us and we can always right click and we can edit the group or we can rename it. In this case, I'm gonna call this one gear joints. So that way, if I'm hovering the cursor over this, those entities are going to be displayed and gear joints is also going to be shown at the bottom. There are some limitations when we go to create these different groups. Let's take a look at trying to create this capture position and also encompass some of the elements that we use to create that idler gear. If we select all these entities and right click, we can create a group that encompasses both of those different entities. You'll notice that it has a small green bar and a red bar at the top. The limitation comes when we try to create a group that is going to encompass another group. You notice that if we right click, the only option we have here is to expand groups. If we right click on a group, we can expand the group and bring those elements out or we can use the minus and plus icons to expand or contract them. But we aren't able to create groups that contain additional groups. So that is a limitation that we need to be aware of and something that you should do when you're planning out what items to create groups with. I'm gonna go ahead and take this base feature all the way back to this capture position, right click, and notice that this also does not allow me to create a group. Because it contains these two base feature items that were used during the creation of the hardware for McMaster Car. So once again, that limitation means that we can't just simply grab everything in the timeline and condense it into a group. There are some things that we can do in the browser to help as well. We can create a component that can be the top level component for all things such as hardware. We can do this by creating a new empty component the new empty component I'm gonna name hardware. When we create that empty component, we can then select all of the hardware in the browser and drag and drop it into that component. Noting the timeline now contains all of these different cut paste drag and drop items. So that means if I go back to the top level, those are gonna be at the end of my timeline. But when I activate my hardware component, they're all inside. If we expand this, you wanna note that when we do this, the hardware is now free to move because it's broken that rigid group. So that is a limitation we need to be aware of. When we're restructuring the browser 
if we've created any joints between things like hardware as a rigid group between our housing, that link is going to be broken and we need to reapply those. At this point, let's make sure that we save the design before moving on. 